stand by the rod of the apostolic i move you forward moving to your destiny the first thing that the prayer that engenders dominion produces is access to the voice of god if god is not speaking into your life you'll be in trouble it is by prayer that divine purposes are born when a man who dominates by prayer is praying one of the things that he catches from the realm is the voice of Yahweh. of his heart because your impact is superior to the color of your skin mediocrity must be kicked out of our borders this is why this subject is very important god forbid that all your life you are living off a salary and your destiny is defined by a boss or by a government and if there's no salary paid the quality of your life dwindles as though you are but a slave god forbid that for the rest of your life your fate is determined by a system that is run by the secular society you must tell yourself that i must enlarge until i no longer live to survive i live to make impact and to change the lives of others please sit down if you don't have the right mentality in life you'll be a slave in fact, slavery is so modernized that they decided to call the people who depend on systems civilized servants. And people boldly and joyfully write on their certificates and on their documents that they are civil servants. They tell you to the face that you are a servant and you are a slave. There is nothing wrong in starting from somewhere. But you must refuse a system or a government defining your life. If you will only grow and make impact, you will be shocked that the wealth of the nations can come to you. Because you are willing to pull out something from your inside. This is why the subject of enlargement is too important. Enlargement is simply growth. Enlargement is simply increase. And so this growth and increase is both qualitative and quantitative your qualitative growth is what defines your quantitative growth your quantitative growth cannot exceed your qualitative growth so when you see the circumstances around the man's life those circumstances are indicators of the values that he upholds the circumstances that surrounds a man's life are indicators of the quality of the man's life and so a man's problems are not the circumstances around his life. A man's problems are the qualities that define his being. When your value begins to grow, your scope begins to expand. And so enlargement is not just about increase in number primarily. It is first of all advancement of the qualities that define who you are. When those qualities begin to increase, by all means, they will affect everything around you. Nobody is exonerated from this reality. Jesus is the Son of God. The Bible said, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. It said, the same was in the beginning with God. John chapter 1 verse 1 to 4. And it said, all things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life and the life was the light of men so jesus created all things and the quality of man's life is a propensity of the light that came out of his spirit but when jesus became a man when he became a man because this definition was him as god without human flesh when the world became flesh jesus needed to quickly begin to grow and enlarge and so in luke chapter 2 verse 40 the one that created all things the bible said and the child because if he remains a child he can be killed by herod as a child joseph will need to escape with him else he will die hope you know jesus can be killed that's why he died on the cross as a child he needed to be safeguarded when he became a man he laid down his life but as a child an angel had to come from heaven and say, run with this child to Egypt this night. Because Herod would have killed him. 
And so because even Jesus who is God became flesh knew that impact was not possible except as there is enlargement in Luke chapter 2 verse 40. He said the child grew and worked strong in the spirit and the wisdom of God was in him and the favor of God was upon him. Because for him to become savior of the world, he needed to grow from a child to the man, Christ Jesus. Most of you here, the destiny of territories and the destiny of nations are on your shoulders. The problem is that you have refused to enlarge. And so long as you remain a child, it will remain a prophecy. The day you grow, it will cease being a prophecy. It will become a manifestation. In as much as we love and appreciate prophecies, manifestations are the things that profit. He said, it is the manifestation of the spirit that profit. If all you carry are prophecies, you are only a potential and the world may wait for a lifetime. What converts a prophecy to a manifestation is for the child to grow and to work strong in the spirit. There are too many people not growing. And so, you met them 10 years ago, they were a body. Meet them today, they are a body. And all they waste their life doing is complaining about others. I just asked him for 2,000. See the way he treated me because of 2,000. If 2,000 naira is easy, get it for yourself. Instead of looking inward and beginning to build themselves, take the challenge of growth. They are blaming everybody and everybody all the time and they never grow. Why will you be begging 10 years ago and 10 years now you are still begging? There's something wrong and if you don't address it, you will beg until you are old. The subject of enlargement is too important. And so Jesus grew in grace. He is grace personified. But becoming a man, he needed to grow in grace. He is one with the spirit, but becoming a man, he needed to work strong in the spirit. That is qualitative enlargement. And when qualitative enlargement was achieved, in Matthew chapter 8, the Bible said from verse 1, as he returned to the mountain, a man that was paralyzed ran to him. Everybody begins to run to him because he has become a solution. And he says, stretch forth thy hand, he was healed. He went to Peter's house the mother-in-law was sick. He commanded the fever to leave. While they were there just to have dinner, the place became a crusade ground. The Bible says when the evening was come, there was no flyer. There was no poster. There was no announcement. He said they brought all that were sick in the city to him. How did they know? That means Jesus lost the right to walk on the street. Jesus lost the right to walk in public. Because the moment they hear that he's around, the whole city will gather around him. So from qualitative enlargement to quantitative enlargement, 30 years of his life, nobody cared about him. In fact, John had to introduce him. Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. But when qualitative enlargement was achieved, he didn't need an introduction anymore. When he was hid in a house, the whole city gathered around him. And he came out and he never let them down for once. The Bible said he touched them and all that were sick were made whole. You will not make impact except as you are enlarged. And for you to be enlarged, you must journey from qualitative development to quantitative development. Quantitative development is actually a byproduct of qualitative development. This is not about ministry. This is about impact in life and destiny. Some years ago, I went somewhere to buy water. I took the, my car to the mechanic village to fix. And when I stepped to the shop to buy water, they said the water was 50 naira. I said, what? How can you sell pure water for 50 naira? While I was here talking, the guy pointed that that shop there, they sell it for 10 naira. They knew their value that they were unapologetic about it. Here we say like this, if you don't want to go there. I went somewhere to cut my hair some years ago. 
And when I enter, they say her court is 1,000. Why will you cut her for 1,000? They say, see the next up there. They cut her for 250. Meanwhile, the shop where they cut her for 250 was dry. The shop where they cut her for 1,000 was packed and flooded. That was the reason I entered there in the first place. How can this be more expensive yet everybody is coming there? Because quantitative value responds to qualitative value. If you don't have qualitative value, you will struggle and labor. Nobody will come to you. I gave you the instance of Jesus, the Son of God, so that you will know that no man is exonerated. Jesus had to grow in favor, in grace. He had to grow. When he grew in quality, the Bible said the whole city came to him. Every time Jesus moved, there is one word that is common. The multitude. The multitude. The multitude. Because there was too much quality for the environment to ignore him. And so calling yourself the child of God without paying the price to grow is a joke. You are deluded. It is when you cross time into eternity, you will discover that the reward of heaven is not for children of God. The reward of heaven is for the overcomers. The reward of heaven is for those that made impact. Because reward is a gift for those who paid the price to overcome in time. If you don't pay the price to overcome in time, at best you will be accommodated. But there will be nothing for you. Paul said, I have finished my course. I have run my race. He said, there remained for me a crown of life. The crown of life is not because Paul was a child of God. The crown of life was because he fought a good fight. He kept the faith. So anybody who doesn't make impact in this kingdom will be surprised in eternity. Because even in eternity, they are poor people. Did you not read about Lazarus? He was in Abraham's bosom. Because he owned nothing. He was a righteous man, but he didn't make impact. And because he didn't make impact, even in eternity, he owned nothing. Don't assume that when you come to eternity, there will just be abundance. The abundance is commensurate to the impact you have made. I'm saying this so that as I advance the spiritual principles for enlargement, everybody will make up their minds this morning to pay the price to make it happen in their own lives. <sighs> Uh-huh. 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 U